Israel bombs Damascus, a historical day in U.S. Congress, a coronavirus update in Israel, and Facebook and Trump squaring off. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, Brother Wayne here from Alabama. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy. Today I want to share with you a few news updates, but let's jump into the word of the day. Here in Matthew chapter 24, I'm really going to share one verse with you in verse 4, and I really want to bring this to light to you because when, when we watch TV and we look on the internet, we see a lot of conflicting stories now. I think that if each and every person sat down, you could find one positive thing that you've read today and one negative thing you've read today or looked at on your phone or your computer or your laptop, and you'll know they'll kind of contradict each other. And so one of the things that I really want to just bring out to you today is signs of the end times is in Matthew 24, verse 4. You know, the disciples here, they asked Jesus, and when they were off to themselves on the Mount of Olives, Jesus, what are the signs of your coming and of the end of the age? And Jesus' first response to him, the very first thing he said was in verse 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. You know, the deception is real in the world today. I think that when we look at many, many things, you know, as many cameras there are around and as many microphones and as much access as we have to social media these days, it seems like there would be more truth out there than there would be false things. Well, the fact is, is now that technology is so great, you know, somebody can, can put on a shirt and a hat and go do something and it immediately associates them with a, a certain group of people, you know, kind of moving forward. So when you see that, it's hard to really kind of pick out that deception. So as a sign of the end times, I would strongly encourage you to know that the deception is going to be real. So first, I, I want to kind of talk a little bit about what happened yesterday in Washington, D.C., such a sad day. You know, when I sit back and I try to take the emotion out of it to actually report it in biblical prophecy, it's tough. You know, there, there's so much emotion there because you see the loss of life, you see the damage and destruction, and, and it's very hard to see. I mean, it's very even hard to process that a group of people could even breach uh, the, the U.S. Capitol there and it's it's hard to even fathom that that went on in the world yesterday. And when you sit back and look at it, you know, yesterday, January 6, 2021, will be a day that will be remembered forever in U.S. history. In fact, it, it really leads me to, to think about all the past events, you know, all the riots that we had in the major cities. You know, there were riots in... Portland, Oregon. There were riots in Minneapolis. There uh, you know, were riots in several big cities across the United States. And they went on and on with destruction. And it really just makes you sit back and think about the end times. So think about where you're at. Because one of the things that, that I sit back and I think about is that lawlessness will abound. I think that any of us could sit here today and agree that lawlessness is all around us. We have deception, we have lawlessness, we, we really have a world now that is looking for a solution. A world that is seeking answers for not only problems for the coronavirus, not only problems for, say, social inequality issues, or not only just solutions to the problems of government, of even financial markets, that are in trouble? What about U.S. and China trade war? What about, you know, over in the Middle East, Iran and, and what they're doing? And then all of a sudden you have all these peace deals that are being brokered in the Middle East that countries are starting to normalize, Arab countries are starting to normalize with Israel. And we see these things and we're realizing that a solution is needed to solve all the world's problems. This is where the beast kingdom will rise. This is where the Antichrist will come on the scene. 
And I can't tell you when. I can't tell you when he'll be here or if he's not already here. I can't tell you when his kingdom shall rise. I can't tell you any of that. But what I can tell you is that the Holy Spirit must be removed from the situation before the Antichrist can be revealed. And that's in 2 Thessalonians. So don't lose hope. If you're a Christian and if you're a follower of Jesus Christ on what is going on in this world, because the Bible even says, because iniquity in Matthew 24, verse 12, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Don't let your love wax cold. Love your fellow neighbor. Remember, the greatest commandment of all is love. God has called us to love one another. But, but let me also share a verse with you in, in verse 21 to just really kind of sum up what is coming on the face of this earth. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. And then in verse 22, let's add this. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. See, what we see is that there, this world is going to keep spiraling down. You know, I'm not in the group that, okay, everything's going to be okay, everything's going to be all right. When we see the signs of the end times, we know that it, it's, it's as birth pains. You know, they go up, they go down. So the intensity and the frequency of the end time signs will be very frequent and then kind of decrease. Be very frequent and kind of decrease. Be very frequent and kind of decrease until what the baby is born. So I really want to kind of leave you with that because you, you must understand that, that these are signs of the end times. We are in a spiritual battle. We are in a battle of good versus evil. So it's very easy to have disagreements with people on social media on preferring this candidate over that candidate or this party's values over that party's values if you're in the United States. But you must understand, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so now kind of looking into the news and first for the U.S. Congress, let's... Uh, Let's just stop here and, and just say that the loss of life is never uh, easy, that um, it, under no circumstances should there ever be riots and damage and destruction over a disagreement of a political issue. Um, we've seemed to have that quite a bit now in the United States. Uh, for the four people that have lost their lives uh, as a this broadcast today. May our, our thoughts and prayers be with you and your family and your friends. And I pray that you did not die in vain. I pray that God uses your death as an, an area in which it will bring him glory and honor and praise and that you shall be remembered uh, how you lived, not how you died. And so at the end of the day, um, it is never easy. Uh, the emotion there is very, very tough to even just go through it watching. You know, as I was up watching it last night through early in the morning, it was just something I couldn't turn away from. It was just something that I, I kept watching just hoping that uh, nothing else would happen, that it wouldn't, you know, just get any crazier. But at yesterday afternoon after the broadcast, just my phone kept blowing up with, you know, this happening and that happening, and I was really at a loss for words. I could not believe I was watching such an event. Um, you know, then late early in the morning, the Congress met and certified Joe Biden to be the next president of the United States. Uh, this was kind of more of a formality of, of counting the electoral votes, as I mentioned in yesterday's broadcast. Uh, there was some contention even then. You know, there were contention of states and senators and, you know, kind of basically not being opposed to this. Um, you know, I, I will say that, um, you know, it, it's, it, it, it is an event that, you know, has happened. Um, you know, I hope that this country now 
comes under with a unified spirit. I think that that's very important for the United States to become unified again. And uh, just know that although yesterday was one of the darkest days in U.S. history, um, I think that over time uh, it, it will be, you know, kind of maybe as a turning point in U.S. history. Now today could very well easily be day one of the new world order. Uh, but what we must understand is that you know, what has happened has happened, and I, and I pray and encourage each and every one of you to, to pray now for President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. Pray for them. Pray that God leads them and guides them and directs them. Pray for our House of Representatives. Pray for our Senate. Uh, pray for all our lawmakers and all our decision makers. Pray for our police. Pray for our firemen. Pray for our ambulances our ambulance workers, our doctors, our nurses. Pray for all our people because we really need it now as a nation. Now, kind of looking at the earthquakes, one of the trends lately, and if you follow this channel, you, you understand this, is that the earthquake, the numbers has been increasing and the intensity has been increasing lately. Well, as of today's broadcast, 46 earthquakes have a 2.5 magnitude or greater. And then just a couple of them to really highlight it out. A 4.8 in the Northern Atlantic Ridge, a 5.2 in the West Chile Rise. Remember, we had one of those a couple days ago. 4.6 in Colombia, 5.0 in Indonesia, a 5.0 in Fiji, 6.1 in Indonesia, 4.9 in Japan, and a 4.9 in the Kermadec Islands region. So what, what you're seeing is you're having an uptick in intensity, but you're also having an uptick in the number of earthquakes. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, we're really needing to release some energy here that is being absorbed by the earth. And, and so we, we really need to do that. Uh, while, all, while everything was kind of going on yesterday in Congress and, and really the world's eyes were upon us, um, I, I've even read an article in which Iran... Russia, China, um, as well as other countries were, you know, taking a very significant interest in what was going on in the United States yesterday. But well, also, while this was going on, Israel bombed Damascus. I think one of the, one of the important things is anytime you see anything going on with Damascus, as a Christian and biblical prophecy, it opens up, right? You know, in, in last week's episode, I talked about how the city of Damascus will be destroyed, and it will be destroyed in one night. And over the last 10 days, Israel has bombed the areas around Damascus and destroyed Iranian assets three different times. So that's very, very important. Uh, these strikes were around the town of al Damas, which was west of Damascus, somewhat. Um, but I will say, Israel has targeted these areas in the past. Um, as usual, the Israeli Defense Forces, they don't comment on these things. Um, but it does say that the attacks began after 11 p.m. Wednesday night. Uh, very, very interesting there. You'll notice a lot of those kind of attacks happened during the night, you know, as well as, you know, compared to during the day. Uh, something kind of new is, is on a coronavirus update that I thought that was kind of neat was the first shipments of the Moderna vaccine now have arrived in Israel. Uh, this, is, this is very big. This is from Heretz.com. Uh, this, this was kind of very good. You know, just to kind of give you an update, Israel now has entered the third lockdown. Um, and then, you know, if, if you're a foreigner going into the country, you must have a two-week uh, quarantine as you get there. Um, and you got to get a coronavirus test once you get there as well. Um, one of the latest updates in kind of the coronavirus Israeli vaccination program there is Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz are now pushing for the vaccine for all teachers. You know, when, when you shut down the school system, um, early this week, the latest count was that Israel had, had a little bit north of 12,000 students with the coronavirus positive cases. And so now 
You know, you got Prime Minister Netanyahu, Benny Gantz, even the Health Minister, uh, Yuli Edelstein, basically have asked parties to consider you know, giving it to the teaching staff. Um, it's particularly under the age of 60 um, for, for this as well. So that, now that kind of brings a little bit of issues there because then you have the teachers union um, and then you kind of want to look at that versus, you know, are, are they supporting it things? Um, basically, the teachers union has said that they want to get all teachers uh, vaccinated. Now, just the Moderna vaccine, it does use the messenger RNA technology. Uh, it's, you got, it was developed by Pfizer and BioNTech. Um, and so Israel has reached a deal to secure 2 million of these doses. Um, this vaccine is tested to be 95% efficient. So it's pretty, pretty neat here. Uh, this shipment of the, of the vaccines was only was 100,000 doses. So that's kind of neat. We're going to continue to watch that and continue to report on that. I think that that's very, very, very interesting. Uh, but I did see here also in the article that Israel now has roughly 60,801 active cases. Um, so that's, that's kind of very, very important um, as far as the congression, or as far as, excuse me, the coronavirus. Now, kind of looking at, at really what's kind of going on now in the U.S., there's been, there's been a movement now by House Democrats to actually impeach Trump. Trump now, you know, now we're on the 7th, and Inauguration Day is the 20th. So it's, really, it's 13 days away. Really, you could say it's even 12 and a half days away now. And there's a call now to impeach Trump. And I find that very interesting, particularly because you only have just a few days left, Right. Um, I, there's been even a report, and that was from the J Post, but then also from like the Times of Israel, Facebook has now banned Trump um, indefinitely after what happened yesterday at the U.S. Capitol, and, and it's actually going to be locked at least until the 20th. Uh, with that, you also have Twitter has banned him, as well as Instagram has banned him. So the communication venues for current U.S. President Donald Trump is kind of minimized. I think that that's, that's kind of very important, you know, because never in our history have we ever seen such a, um, basically kind of a shadowing of someone, it seems. Um, you know, even Zuckerberg for Facebook, he, he even announced that it would be for two weeks, but it could be remained uh, locked indefinitely. So it's very, very neat. You'll see that a lot of these things are going to kind of come out um, but a lot of movement here now in the United States with Donald Trump and Zuckerberg actually posted uh, a post toward, on Facebook that uh, you can definitely find um, basically just you know as, as Donald Trump now has actually put out a statement that says he will support a peaceful transition to Biden and ha Kamala Harris in their administration. So that's kind of that's kind of neat. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to report the news as we see it. Uh, we're definitely going to keep you updated with anything that that we can. Um, you know, and then just a couple more thoughts um, on on kind of Joe Biden and kind of the transition. Joe Biden has announced that he's, you know, he's starting to fill his cabinet positions. He's starting to fill the attorney general positions, things like that. So more news is definitely going to come out on that. And then you're see seeing several now, although it's 12 and a half days left, what's very unusual is that some Trump officials are basically resigning today um, and as well as yesterday. So very, very peculiar. Uh, but, but what we will see, though, is that this is just kind of the transition of power. It's kind of through the process. Um, but, I, I, you know, as, as we leave here, I want to jump back into Matthew chapter 24. And I want to go into verse 36 here before we go. And this is talking about when the tribulation period to come upon us, uh, when the judgment finally comes in the United States. It says, But of that day and hour... Knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. And then verse 37, But as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Are you prepared? 
Do you see the lawlessness all around you? Do you see just kind of the world looking for a solution from a man, an entity, the Antichrist coming on the scene? Do you see it? I really hope you can because today today it was it's not really easy to report on what happened yesterday in the United States. Um, but do you see the lawlessness abounding? Do you see how the love of many people could, could grow cold? Do you see how many are starting to be offended by just the name of Jesus Christ across this world? Have you noticed that on social media, different trends like that? Well, are you ready? If Jesus were to come back today to rapture his church and for his bride, are you 100% certain you would go with him? Or would you be here during the tribulation period for the Antichrist to build the third temple, to reinstitute a temple worship in which, it, in which people are going to be stuck back into the giving the, daily, or the sacrifices in the temple? Are, are you going to see that? Are you going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb during the tribulation period? Hey, I, I, I'm just asking you, you know, the, the deception is real. So here I'm just going to ask you, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Do you know you would go to heaven? Well, if you don't, I'm going to invite you on these simple steps. Just, just as Paul wrote uh, throughout the New Testament, have you admitted that you're a sinner? Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and that it is the work of the finished work of the cross that in which Jesus died on the cross, his precious blood was spilt, both for you and for me? And do you confess that you need a Savior, confess your sins to Jesus and say, Jesus, I trust in you, I trust in the work, I trust that you're the Son of Jesus, or you're the Son of the Holy Living God? Lead me, guide me, and direct me. Ask Jesus to come into your heart. Now, maybe you've never made that profession of faith. Maybe you're just kind of on the verge of it, and you're like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. I'm unsure. And when you're watching this video right now, I, I guarantee you I'm speaking directly to you right now. I'm going to encourage you to do this. I'm going to encourage you to get right down and pray right now and say, God, Teach me who you are. Show me who you are. Show me that you're around me and that what you say in your word is true. And he will do it. He will do it. It could happen. It could happen. You know, he could come at any point in time. And in fact, the latest events, even in just the last 24 hours, tell me that our time draweth nigh. Very, very close. So make sure you're ready. Because with every beginning, as I love to say, there is an ending. Well, once again, this is Brother Wayne from Alabama, and I thank you for your time today. And Lord willing, I will see you tomorrow. Well, my time is up. I thank you for yours. Have a great day.